Hello, green team. We are on part four of six in our series, Securing a Listing. Uh, keep in mind, we are uh, right here on preparing the listing agreement, step four. Uh, we just prepared our doors presentation. We've already done the getting to know you. We're at the office getting all of our stuff ready so that we can go back um, and do the step two of the listing appointment. So today's all about getting the actual documents ready. We wanna have the documents ready. So if at step two of the listing appointment, the sellers say, where do we sign? We are ready to go, we're prepared, we've got all our stuff ready to go. So that's what we're gonna set up today. Uh, so we're gonna go through setting up a transaction, utilizing the file checklist, filling out the forms, creating an estimated net sheet, explaining disclosures to sellers. Let's jump in. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna make up an address, but I'm gonna come into my MLS and go to transaction desk. And actually, let's just pretend I'm gonna grab a random property off the MLS so that uh, we can get some numbers here. So I'm gonna do 2313 Leaf Drive and more. So I'm gonna do create a transaction in my transaction desk. What I like to name this is like 23, can't remember, 13 Leaf Drive more and then i like to do a little space dash space and put the actual owner's name and normally you would know this um, because you're doing the listing you've already talked to them but this is up to graft great i picked a real easy last name up to graft and i'm not going to do a template i'm going to make the type a residential listing because i'm listing the property and then I'm going to pretend like it's not in the MLS because I'm getting ready to list it. So I'm going to use what you would normally use, which is the realist. Um, I'm going to need to know the right county. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to look back just to see what county we're in. We're in Cleveland. And then I need the tax ID, which will be nicely on the realist report for me, which is right here on the tax ID. So if you need all this info, just go to realist and you can grab it all from this one sheet here. Um, and I'm going to go put my tax ID in. I'm going to add myself as the listing agent. And I'm not, I am not going to use the wizard. I don't really like using that. So I'm going to create it. And now I've got my transaction. Uh, sometimes it doesn't add the subdivision in here or the lot and block number. And I just add it because it's easier at this point usually. So I've got lot nine block four. And here's my legal. So I'm just going to copy that so I have it. Let's put my legal here. Lot nine, block four. Those are usually the only things I add just because it saves me a little bit of time later and not having to type it in multiple times. Then I'm just going to check, click my checkbox and like so. And so then I'm going to go to home and I'm going to click my leaf file. And here's my board. Uh, this is how I like to have it set up. The key is you got to have forms, documents, and contacts all in here, all three of these boxes. If you don't, just click this little lock icon, and you can see up here there's actually the document, the uh, item. So if contacts wasn't up here, I would click it here and drag it down, and it would put it down there for me. And then once it's down there, I can just click lock again, and it'll move that out of there. So here's all my setup, and then I'm going to add a contact, and I'm just going to create it as me, but I'm going to put the seller's name in there, Todd Updegraft. Todd Up. And if I put this in now, I don't have to enter it on every form and throughout the transaction over and over. And I'm just going to put my email for now, but I would put my seller's email in here. Um, and then if he has a legal name or something I need to change, I'd put it in there. And I want to put him in as the seller. And I'm going to save that. So now I've got my contact added. I've got my dashboard set up and the property. Uh, it's time to add the forms. Now you might be wondering what forms do you need for a listing agreement? If you will follow these steps, you will never be wrong. So if you go to the drive, you can just click, uh, let me go back here. I need to go to my WRC OK. So if I'm in my WRC OK and I go to property files and I go to coming up, coming up means I have a listing coming up that I'm working on. This is what this folder is for. So I would rename one of these uh, 2313 Leaf Drive, which I'll do real quick. And notice how I named this 2313 Leaf 
drive comma more. If you name it like that, it'll really help you find it and help us find it and your branch coordinators find it so you can get paid at closing. So boom, I've got my folder set up. I'm probably going to download my realist report and put it in this folder um, so that I have it. And then I'm going to go into my property file checklist. This form will save your life if you use it. It will make sure you get paid on time every time on transactions. So in here, I've got a section called listing. These documents right here up at the top are my listing documents that I have to have in my property file. And right here at the top, I see my realist report. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and I'm going to click print on my realist report. And hopefully this doesn't take too long. And then I'm going to download it. And that's where I would throw it in that folder. So I'm going to come over here to WRC OK. And I'm going to select property files. Coming up. And I think I just messed that up because it's in a different spot now. So let me come back through here. WRC OK, property files coming up. And then I'm going to find my 2313 Leaf Drive. And I'm going to save this as I save every file in here. Leaf Drive More Realist Report. If you name it like this, we'll be able to find it real quick and get you paid real quick. So boom, I've got my first one done. So I'm going to mark done. Next thing I got to do is I got to get my listing agreement. So I'm going to go into my transaction desk. I'm going to go to forms. And I'm going to get my right to sell listing agreement. We're looking for an exclusive right to sell listing agreement. This is a residential property. So I want the residential one. I'm going to click there and you'll notice one popped up in my basket, even though multiple check, just like always. Um, there's actually a couple in here. This is the newer one that was revised 2020. And there's one 2019. Uh, you can use either one, but I would just recommend being comfortable with whichever one you're going to use. So um, I'm going to start with this one. So I've got that added to my folder. So I'm going to keep working down my property file checklist, estimate of proceeds to sellers. I know I got to build that separately. So we'll do that here in a minute. Disclosure of brokerage services. I'm going to come in here and type in brokerage and hope that it comes up. Disclosure of brokerage services. I always like to click the OREC one when I have multiple. Got it. Then I'm looking for property condition disclosure. So I'm going to click in here. Let's do property condition. And there we go. I got my so there's a couple options in here. Agent interactive means I can click through it, which is usually not what we want. Uh, what we usually want is client interactive, which means when I send it to my client, they can fill it out. And we'll talk a little more about that um, a little later in the video, exactly why uh, the client needs to be the one filling it out. But so for now, I'm going to click the client interactive residential property condition disclosure, and I'm going to add it. Um, and then I'm going to come back to my checklist. Lead-based paint, well, let's see if this was built in, if it built prior to 1978, I need lead-based paint. This was built in 1985, so we're good. So I'm gonna mark NA here. Um, and then the rest is stuff that I'm gonna do kind of once I get this all signed. So I don't need to fill this out yet. These are all my forms I need. I've got all my forms added. So we're in good shape right now. Um, what I need to do now is to start filling out my forms. So I'm gonna go into, um, I always start with the listing agreement. I think it's the best spot to start. And here you go, here's your exclusive listing agreement. You need to make sure that you have all the info in here. Some stuff won't translate sometimes. And remember, uh, I saved that property description and that's the addition didn't fill in. So I'm gonna put it in there from that. Um, this is anywhere, anything else that's going to be uh, taken from the property that wouldn't normally stay. I'm gonna list here from my seller. I'm gonna put in my listing price here and this is listed at 158. So we're just gonna match that for now. This is whatever amount you and your seller have agreed to list the property for. The listing shall commence on, this is the date that you start getting paid if you sell the house. That's why this date's so important. Um, it should usually be the day that they're signing. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna put it as today's date, which is October 3rd. And if they sign today, that means if I find them a buyer, even if it's not in the MLS yet, if I find them a buyer today, it's, I get paid on the listing. 
The next thing is uh, when the listing agreement ends, which usually we're going to do, we're always going to do a minimum of four months on these. So this would be December 3rd. Um, you could do up to a six month if you wanted to. And so we've got that filled out. Again, I'm just going through the boxes and what to fill out in this, but you have got to read this. This is your guys' job. This is your profession. The listing agreements are how we get paid. You've got to take the time, set aside the time to actually read through this and let me know what questions you have. I'd love to answer them. But for now, I'm showing you how to fill it out. Um, so this just says that we're waiving any duties, which we shouldn't be waiving any duties. If you guys are, then let me know because we need to talk about it. Um, same thing here. Then we're going to scroll down. Here's the real important part. This is how we get paid. So our office standard is to charge a 6% listing fee. That means 3% goes to us as the listing agent, 3% goes to the buying agent. Um, and zero would be if there was some sort of bonus or something attached. So that's our office standard right there. If you guys have questions about that, let me know. But this should not be three. It should be six because we're talking about the buyer and the seller side of the listing commission. Um, then you come down here and this is our extension period. So if within a certain amount of time, um, after the listing agreement, one of the buyers that we've given them, uh, that we've been working with, decides to buy the house, we're protecting ourselves. So we're going to say if within 30 days after the listing agreement, uh, someone comes and buys the house that's on our list that we had given them within, let's say, five days after the end of the listing agreement. So we gave them a list. Here's our buyers that we've been working with. If one of these buyers comes within the next 30 days, we're still getting paid on the deal. That's what these numbers represent. Let me keep scrolling. Uh, we're going to list it in the Oklahoma City MLS. You could also put OKMLS OK here. And then we are going to check down here if we're going to put a key box. Hopefully we're putting a key box there. Um, and hopefully we're always putting a super MLS box there. Those should be your check boxes, which is the blue box. Um, then we're going to list if it's in an HOA. So let's check real quick. Doesn't look like we have any HOA here, so we're going to mark that it's not in an HOA. And if it is, then we need to put the amount and how often it's paid. We're going to say this is not a special assessment. A special assessment's like maybe the roads in a neighborhood are all messed up and they're not city based. They're the neighborhood has to get them fixed, so they've agreed that everyone in the neighborhood is going to pitch in. That's a special assessment. Um, and then same thing with historical. Preservation and municipal special design. Those are special districts within a city um, that you need to check and make sure it's not in one of those um, when you're marking this. And then this is the home warranty. This is just saying whether the property is going to be covered by home warranty or not being covered by home warranty uh, by the seller. And then any special information goes here. Again, please read this document. This is how you get paid. You need to know this information. Um, and then we're going to fill in uh, the date, the seller's info here, including the address, um, and we're done filling out our listing agreement. So I'm going to exit out of this, save and exit. That's the hard form. The next one that I'm going to talk about, um, actually, I'm going to skip this for a second. We'll come back to that disclosure in a second. I'm going to do the disclosure of brokerage services. And this would be a listing brokerage agreement. This is uh, an agreement of what our duties are to our seller uh, that explains to them. We'll date it here and they'll sign it down here. That's for our seller. That's an easy one to fill out. Make sure you're clicking the right box. It's a listing brokerage agreement. Oh, I just clicked the wrong one. Okay, um, and now I've got to get my estimate done. So I'm gonna come down here to the CTO app. This is the CTO Agent One app, which most of you have on your phones. And I actually think it's easier and works a little better on your phone, but I'm just gonna walk through if you didn't have it on your phone. We've got to create a net to seller at the listing price. We also have to create a net to seller each time an offer comes in so that they can evaluate that offer. Um, so anytime it's requested, we've got to submit one of these to the seller and it has to be signed. Uh, we're required by law to do this. So we're just going to walk through a conventional loan and let's say they do it at list price, which is 158. So I'm going to come in here and put 158. We're doing a 6% commission. 
Um, I always put in a thousand dollars for repairs because that gets it in my seller's mind that they may have to pay for repairs and lets me usually give them a surprise in the positive if they don't pay for repairs. Property taxes are auto calculated loan balance. If your uh, sellers want to give you their mortgage balance, you can put it in here to get them a true net. Otherwise, most people just like to calculate their own net outside of it. Um, so they don't usually give us that or it's not really necessary for them to give us the loan balance. And we're going to put in like we're closing this thing in 30 days. So 11 two is fine uh, for this purpose. And the interest rates automatically in there. So I just click compute. Again, you can do it on your phone. I actually think it's a little faster and easier on your phone. Uh, but this is the desktop version of the same thing. So here we go. We've got the net at close. So this is the amount that the seller will have to pay off their mortgage amount. And then whatever's left will be their net at close. Um, so it actually shows in here the taxes owed, their closing costs, and then what they're netting at close. Um, and they can even see a more specific one. And I can go to the share print PDF. If you set up your profile in Agent One, it'll have your info on here, maybe even a photo. And all I'm gonna do is download this. I'm gonna download a PDF to my folder. And I'm gonna go back to my folder, which is under my drive, WRC OK, property files coming up, 2313 Leaf Drive. And this is, again, I'm always putting my address in here because I like to be organized and seller net sheet. Okay, so I've got it in here. Now I just need it in transaction desk. So I'm gonna click documents, which is where my PDFs go. You could either drag and drop, um, which probably would have been faster because I don't have to re-navigate, but I will do it. Property files coming up, 2313 Leaf Drive, and boom, I'm in here. Okay, and then the final thing I need to do is my property condition disclosure. Just going to mention it to you. This is not for agents to fill out. This is for the property owners to fill out. Um, it is not our responsibility to fill this out and no way are we obligated to fill this out. Uh, what we need to do is present this to our buyers so that they can fill it out. So up here, seller is or is not occupying the property. All of these items are whether they're working, not working, don't know if they're working or none not included. These are pretty self-explanatory. Your seller has to be the one to fill this out, not you. Um, and they'll initial on each page. Make sure they're initialing on the seller side. Um, and then these questions go through a series of yes and no's. Um, Again, your seller needs to be the one answering these questions. And there is an option down here below. If they answered yes, they need to uh, explain their yeses. Uh, so basically you just put the number sign of what number they said yes to and then the explanation. And if they need more room, they can attach additional page. Just mark that there's an additional page attached um, with more information of what they are disclosing. Again, these are your seller's disclosures. This is their document. This is their story about the house, not yours. As agents, we're not responsible for knowing the story of the house. Um, there's also a disclaimer and an exemption form, but I urge you guys to use these first. And then if a special case comes up, you can come talk to your branch broker and ask them if this is the opportunity to use an exception or a disclaimer form. Uh, in general, always use the disclosure statement. It'll get you uh, wh where you need to go. So real quick, I want to go back to my document. Um, so one way that I like to do this is I like to send all these documents to myself and opt-in assign uh, with my seller's signature um, set up in an email or in-person reviewer. Um, so just real quick, I'm going to show you. If I go in here and I click add, I'm just going to do it in classic, which you guys are probably doing it in new, which is fine. Um, and I'm going to click my transaction down here. And I'm going to name this my listing agreement. Okay, and then I'm going to save. So this is an in-person signer, so I'm sending it to myself. So when I'm at the seller's house, I can literally pull it up on my desktop and they can look through it and click to sign as we're there. So I'm going to do simul sign. Uh, the participants, I'm just going to put them for now and I'm going to do in-person signer. And that means it's going to send me the email of all these documents. Um, and I need, I didn't put seller, I think, probably. Oh, so on the host. And I'm going to give myself a pin. And for now, I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's going to send it to me and it's going to ask me for my pin. And that's kind of the verification authentication it's going to do. 
I'm going to put all my documents in here. And then I can drop my signatures just like I normally would. And it's going to send me the email so that I can have them sign. I'm going to take you guys through this next step just so you can physically see it happening. See if it'll do it kind of quickly. Obviously, it's going to drop in there as seller's initials and stuff and the signatures. The only thing it's not going to drop, and you'll see here the seller, this is all the, the spots that they can click, uh, mark X's on the disclosure. The only thing I'm going to drag and drop is their signature on the estimate and a date stamp. Okay, and I'm just going to send this real quickly. The send. And hopefully I get the email here relatively quickly. Um, again, it'll just send me an email with all the documents so that I can physically have the seller after my listing presentation, the doors presentation, they say, Mitch, we're ready. We want to sign with you. I can go, great. Here's the, here's the list of documents. Uh, feel free to read them at your own pace. You're going to get a copy of all of these, but go ahead. Um, and I'm going to explain just kind of page by page a, through the listing agreement, the disclosures and the estimate and walk them through it so they can click to sign. Um, it, here we go. We've got the actual, what it looks like, um, and we can click start signing. Again, this came to my email, not my seller's email. That's the difference of an in-person signer. And it's gonna ask me for my pin here. Um, continue. And I think I did this. So this is the email so that they know where to send the signed document. So this should be your seller's email. So this should be Todd's email going up here. I'm gonna click accept. So Todd would be sitting in front of me. He's literally just gonna click through here to click to sign his documents. He clicks to sign everywhere, initials everywhere. Um, then it would take a while because he's got to click through all of these. Um, I'm not gonna do that for you guys in front of you right now. But basically, once he does that, you'll say finish, save, boom, you got a signed listing agreement, both of you got copies, and you're done. So that's the end of getting ready for the second step. In our next video, we're actually going to go into the second step of the listing presentation. I'll see you guys there.